I would always say you want to know the averages. So rather than trying to determine the average, merge them all together. That's the way you have to be doing this. When price is in a range, you want to know the average averages of that range. Okay. Got some more examples coming up for you. So the data we want to gather is the obviously the value area high, value area low, and point of control of the merged ranges. Where then when price is in a you know a range. Obviously, if you are trending and the day's going up and up and up and up consecutively, you don't I wouldn't merge profiles together. So merging of the profiles is a lot better when you are in a range. It doesn't doesn't really have as much impact if it's just a trending market. So merging of profiles is much better within a um, you know, within a range, higher term time frame ranges. Okay. So obviously I'm still aware of the daily point of control, etc. So I refer to, you know, I'm still aware where the daily um, value area high or previous day value area low is, daily point of control. I'm still aware of those things. It's not like I forget about them, but I do place much more weight on the merged profile range data. If you're a champion member, you'll see every single week, I will, when I'm going through my analysis, I will always get the, you know, I'm always marking the range volume levels, aren't I? Always marking that point of control value area, low value area high of the current trading range. I'm not, you, you will never see me mark on a, on a Sunday when I do the champion stream, one day of data. So, you know, things that you can pick up on as, you know, as you watch more champion streams, I suppose, but this is just something that I will always do. Yes, these levels are important, but for me, looking at swing trades, uh, the, 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 the merged range is, is a lot more important, and it's the only levels that I actually mark down. Um, the reason for this is much more volume, time, plus transactions have gone on over the whole range. Okay, so really simply, more data is more powerful, no? It truly is just much more helpful, I suppose. Is the better word. This is another example which you might be like, hmm, would you merge this? Would you not? Well, personally, I would merge together these six profiles to create one merged profile of data. Although there is a daily deviation, this can be the start of a whole new range. And this is an interesting one. This print screen is from about six days ago. And over the We've had six days since that, so we now have 12 days of price action. And uh, how the merged profiles look now, we've now 12 days of price action in this. We take all the days of the range and then form them into one bigger profile. Now 12 profiles um, are merged as they were all within the range I was looking at six days ago. So I think it makes sense to come over to here now and show you exactly what I mean, because we're we're trading in this price action now. So you can see here, I'm talking about 12 days. So if we just count this out to make it very obvious, one, so obviously today we're on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12, would bring us back to this point of control. Okay. But what I'm look, talking about here is it doesn't make sense to just, this is confusing. Now, if you look at this, I think you all agree this looks a bit confusing. I would agree so too. <laughs> you don't need to be looking at all of this. What you want to do is because this is, in my opinion, this is all within the same range. So again, it's a little bit difficult maybe to see this because of the resolution on the stream. But you can really see, I would argue that, you know, price has obviously been going up sideways here. So this was an old range. Price has left that old trading range. Okay, it's clearly left the old trading range. It's moved down two profiles sideways another drop. But really what we can see from when we left the old trading range, we formed two days of consolidation before another drop. But seeing as this was two days of consolidation, point of control is very close to each other. And obviously this is what it looked like six days ago. I was under the perspective, we have strong resistance here now, and this is the consolidation before the drop. If we are envisaging or thinking it's likely we're going to be finding resistance back up at around 36k. And let me remind you of why this is the case. We obviously formed the CC 
uh, at, at those highs as well. So it's not like we're forgetting about our other forms of technical analysis. We take the, the Fibonacci from the high down to the low. We obviously had the CC resistance there as well. And obviously this is what it looks like from trading view. Range move down. Those are your two days of consolidation before another move down. So if we are envisaging or predicting almost while we're still down here, we are very likely to move up and form a new range. E.g. we're predicting the range before it's even formed. And that range would obviously be coming in to the CC down towards the lows. This gives us a new range before it's even formed. Yeah, because we're thinking about it early while we're still at the lows. We're envisioning a move back up to resistance, up into the CC, and to form a range. So when we come back to trading view, uh, sorry, exit charts here, what we're going to do then is this is the range that we're envisaging back up to that area of consolidation. This is not needed. We would not merge all up here because this is not part of the range we're expecting. We're expecting the resistance to come in at the CC. So it doesn't make sense to start merging profiles all the way back here. We're going to merge together the profiles of where we expect this range to be put in. And again, this is where mm, it's highly dependent on experience. You're not going to necessarily know straight away where the range is going to be. But you have a really good inkling, yeah? It's kind of just one of these things, intuition, like... You just have a really good feeling of where that resistance is going to be. And when you like, you see the area of consolidation at a CC, it's, you envision that the range is going to, you know, it's not just going to blast through these sort of levels. So we would merge back those profiles. So we're collecting all of this data together. Merge, 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 merge. Back again and back to this last profile, which is on the 19th of June is the last one that we want. And then that gives us all of our profiles merged together. What we'll generally do is remove this session. It looks a lot more cleaner. Yeah? And this obviously clears up each day, but it looks, I hate it when, don't like it when I've merged my sessions. It looks a lot cleaner without that. No. <laughs> so now what we have is the time here and the volume profile here. We can actually see there's a discrepancy between time and price. So this is a one important bit of information time and price discrepancy. We can also then just see very clearly, rather than what we looked at two minutes ago, which was ultra confusing, how could you how could you trade off of that? E.g. when the profiles were still 12 when they're out. Now we've merged them together. You can see how much cleaner this is. Uh, obviously there's a discrepancy. I'm going to do a video talking about time and price differences because this is important, but I've not covered it yet. But this is something that's really important. Um, you know, the volume, pro, the volume, t, you know, the volume point in control is all the way up here, but the time point of control is all the way down here. E.g. time and price aren't following each other. That's something that I would bear in mind, but that's a stream that's coming up. But off of, you know, theories that you've learned, what we would be marking out here is, again, this is a bit debatable because of these differences, but let's just envision for the purpose of education on this video, they're the exact same level. So let's just ignore this as the point of control for, for, for the example. Let's say the point of control lines up here, value area high and value area low. Well, what we would do is mark out our point of control, value area high, value area low of the range. Okay. E.g. now we are marking out these levels, not only for when we're trading within this range, but we know off of prior streams that I've now done, if we leave this range, amazing, move to the upside. With having these levels marked out, we know if we leave the range and it could be two weeks, could be two months. If we come back into this range and see acceptance in the value area high, again, could be in two months time, we leave, move up, come back down. When we come back into this well-respected range, we would know if we see the acceptance below the old range value area high, it's very likely we can come down to the value area or lower that range, or at least the point of control. So this is why it's so important. When you get these really nice ranges that are lasting several weeks, especially if we were to get another full rotation down to the low, this range obviously at the moment is highly speculative. That's something to bear in mind. Um, this would obviously this theory would all work if we got another full rotation down, another full rotation. We actually formed a really you know, longer bound range because if we just, let's just say we do this, this isn't really a range that I'm going to be marking out for, you know, two months into the future. It's not been enough well-respected. It's not gone on long enough. So this again is a, something that you have to bear in mind. The longer the range, like I wouldn't necessarily class this as a range yet. This was an idea that I had that we can form a range off the CC. But if we literally just 
move up from here, let's say tomorrow. It's not ready. I wouldn't class that as a range. We want to see at least another full rotation down to the lows and back up. Then it looks like, you know, then it's an acceptable range. Two, 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 two. You know, at the moment, it's not a range. It's just something to bear in mind, okay? Hope I don't lose too many people with that. But um, yeah, if we go another full rotation down, brilliant. And then we would have our levels marked out, not only for now, because it's important to know, obviously, the levels of the range that we're trading right now. But it's equally as important to know the levels who will, if we, well, when we leave this range, if we ever see acceptance back into it. Um, we're already in waiting, knowing the rule of if we say acceptance into the value area high or, or value area low, it's very likely we'll test the other side of that range, or at the very least, see support or resistance, depending on where you approach it, off of the range point of control. What I would say is obviously it's a lot better if you see volume lining up with time. But yeah, that's for another, it's very literally, I'm going to do another stream on this. But yeah, um, so yeah, that that's that's the profiles that we'd obviously look to merge in this current range.